Welcome. In this lesson, we will face the unfortunate truth that atoms don't look anything like little solar systems. We'll learn to represent electrons as a wave function instead. The wave function will tell us the most likely location to find an electron in the atom. Lastly, because all of this is so confusing for human brains to grasp, I'll fold the lesson into an extended metaphor where we think of electrons as tenants looking for a room to rent inside an atom. We saw in section 6.3 that electrons can only be found in discrete energy levels. In this section, we'll dive into why these energy levels exist and how one energy level is different from any other energy level. Remember the Bohr model of the atom in which the electrons orbit the nucleus like planets in the solar system orbit the sun? Well, there's one big difference between planets and electrons. Planets can have stable orbits. However, electrons, since they're made of charged particles, cannot have a stable orbit. The movement of a charged particle around another charged particle will release radio waves, which would eventually cause the electron to slowly decrease its speed until it runs out of energy and crashes into the nucleus. Clearly, our electrons aren't crashing into the nucleus since our atoms are not constantly releasing radio waves. So what's going on instead? Well, buckle up, this is gonna get a little weird. The electrons in an atom are not particles with definite position and momentum. Instead, the electrons in atoms exist as waves with no definite position. Think of a plucked guitar string. It's hard to say exactly where the quickly vibrating guitar string is at any moment, but we can define the frequency of the sound that it makes. Furthermore, a guitar string can only vibrate at specific frequencies defined by the length of the string. Each of these frequencies is a different energy level for the guitar string. Think of electron orbits as similar to this. There are only certain allowed frequencies for the electron wave to exist in. The allowed energy states make a stationary pattern around the nucleus. Because the stationary pattern is not moving, it's not losing any energy via radio waves. When we think of electrons like waves, we've described them by their wave function, abbreviated with the Greek letter psi. The wave function describes where we are most likely to find an electron if we froze time and took a look. You occasionally hear people refer to electrons as living in an electron cloud. This is what they're talking about. It can be helpful to think of an electron wave function like a fan blade that is rapidly spinning around its axis. We can describe the shape of the, that the blades occupy as maybe a big fat circle. You can't say exactly where any of the individual blades are, but you know that they're within the circle. You certainly wouldn't stick your finger inside. In the same way, electron wave functions describe the most probable location of the electron around the nucleus. If we grabbed a very fast camera and took a picture of these, we could detect where they were at one instant. But as soon as we look up from the camera, the electrons are behaving like a wave again. At this point, you are ready to meet the quantum model of the atom. Quantum mechanics describes an electron's wave function using four quantum numbers. You'll need to know these quantum numbers for the exam. I'll run through each of them here, then incorporate them into an extended metaphor. The principal quantum number n is the most important. It states which energy level the electron is in, which corresponds to how far away the electron is from the nucleus on average. The second quantum number, L, describes the angular momentum of the electron. In practice, this determines the shape of the electron wave function. The simplest shape is a sphere, but things get wild and crazy at higher energies. The third quantum number is M sub L, the magnetic quantum number. This describes the orientation of the orbital. 
The last quantum number, m sub s, describes the electron's spin. Electrons are either spin up or spin down, and that's all you need to know about electron spin right now. Each quantum number has only certain allowed values. The principal quantum number has to be a positive integer with higher values indicating higher energy levels. The angular momentum quantum number, the second one, can be any integer from zero up to one less than n, the principal quantum number. The magnetic quantum number can be any integer between positive L and negative L. Lastly, the spin quantum number is either plus one half or minus one half. Now, it is a fact that quantum mechanics is unlike anything you've ever experienced in your human world. So on the next few slides, I'll walk through a metaphor where we think of an atom as a tall apartment building and the electrons are tenants looking for a place to live. In this metaphor, the principal quantum number will be the story or level of the apartment. The angular momentum will describe the floor plan or the shape of the apartment. The magnetic quantum number will specify which specific apartment is being occupied. Lastly, since each apartment fits two electrons, the spin number describes whether the electrons get the top bunk or the bottom bunk. All right, here we are. Welcome to the E-apartment building. This building represents an atom. Think of the nucleus as in the basement, and no electrons can live in the nucleus. Each floor of the building represents an energy level. The higher up we go, the higher the potential energy of the apartments. In this strange apartment building, we can fit more apartments the higher up we go. The ground floor, floor one, can only fit one apartment, but the fourth floor can fit 16 apartments. Each apartment has a single bunk bed, and so it only fits two electrons. One electron takes the bottom bunk, symbolized with a down arrow. The other electron takes the top bunk. Lastly, the lower apartments are the best deal. So the first electron to move into this atom will pick the apartment on the lowest floor possible. The second electron will be their bunk mate. Now the bottom floor is full. The third electron will move in and take the next lowest apartment, which is on the second floor. The fourth electron will also move into the second floor. This electron could move into the same, same apartment as the third electron, but it would much rather have its own apartment. So instead of sharing, it moves next door. The fifth and sixth electrons occupy the last two empty apartments on floor two. When the seventh electron comes in, it will be bunkmates with the third electron. And the next three electrons fill out the second floor. The 11th electron will have to move into the third floor and so on until all the necessary electrons have homes. The apartment building has a few different options on apartment floor plan or apartment shape. Actually, there are infinite options of floor plan, but we only need to know about four of them, as you'll see shortly. Each shape has its own nickname, the letters S, P, D, and F. The first floor contains only an S apartment. The second floor contains one S and three P apartments. The fourth floor contains one S, three P, and five D apartments. Each level we go up adds another type of floor plan. So what do these floor plans look like? They have some very strange shapes, depending on the third quantum number, the magnetic quantum number M sub L. Each of these is commonly referred to as an orbital. The S orbital looks like a sphere, which is simple enough. An electron in an S apartment is very likely to be found somewhere within that sphere. The P apartments look like dumbbells. There are three orientations of P orbital, which you can think of as which directions the windows face. Either the windows face to the east and the west, to the north and the south, or to the top and the bottom. The D floor plan is where things start to get a little weird. 
Mostly, they look like X's with a few different orientations, but there is one that looks like a donut with a dumbbell inside. The four quantum numbers are like giving the address of a specific electron in an atom. No two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. So in our analogy, the principal quantum number n is the floor of the building. The angular momentum quantum number l is the floor plan of the apartment. The magnetic quantum number m sub l is the orientation of the apartment. And the last quantum number, the spin quantum number, just states whether the electron is in the top bunk or the bottom bunk. I've included all of the important information on this summary slide. Remember that not all combinations of quantum number are allowed. Keep this in mind during your next practice problem. All right, here's your practice problem. You see four addresses for electrons on the screen. Which of these are not allowed? And here's the solution. Check each number against the rules to the upper right. Note that you will not be given these rules on an exam. So for example, electron A lives on the third floor, n equals three. This means that second quantum number L can be anything between zero and two. So the second quantum number here for electron A is valid. The third quantum number can be anything between negative two and positive two. In this case, it's negative one, so that is fine as well. Lastly, the spin quantum number M sub S just has to be plus one half or minus one half. So that one is good. Electron A has a valid address. Looking at electron B, it lives on the fourth floor, meaning its second quantum number can be any integer between zero and three. The second quantum number is zero. Because L is zero, M sub L has to be zero as well. And in this case, m sub l is negative one, which is not allowed. Electron B does not have a valid address.